So is everyone here for Sensu and not prototyping? Which was moved. Everyone is here for Sensu. Um, well, it is uh, 2 a.m. in San Francisco right now, where I'm from, so um, uh, I usually would be sleeping now. Um, but I guess we'll go ahead and get started here. Uh, <laughs> so glad to see everybody. Um, uh, thanks all for coming. Um, and uh, yeah, it's great to be at DrupalCon. Really excited to... Um, feel all the Drupal energy and to uh, uh, the great DevOps track and, and kind of um, uh, uh, excited that I get to share a little bit about Sensu, which is a tool that um, I uh, work with and work on. Um, so I'm Nick Stilau. I'm the Director of Operations at Pantheon um, and Stilau on Twitter and D.O. Um, um, so yeah, let's get into it. Uh, so Sensu is a monitoring uh, framework. Um, uh, it's similar to maybe people have been around operations for a while, it's similar to Nagios, but it kind of is reinvented to take advantage of, of the cloud and configuration management and some of these other tools that are out there. Um, so Sensu is an uh, open source framework. It's all hosted on GitHub. Um, it's kind of based in Ruby. Um, and the reason, uh, <laughs> the reason that I wanted to present is, uh, is that I love, uh, you know, the Drupal community has so much energy and so many smart people doing some, you know, like very various and um, different things and uh, everyone in this room is doing really cool and smart and interesting things. Um, and, uh, and there's some, a lot of cool people in the Sensu community um, who in kind of the DevOps communities really want to kind of get those communities together and see what we can do when we're all together because that's, kind of, uh, that's kind of where the magic happens. So hopefully sharing a bit with Sensu and uh, get to hear more about what you guys are working on and what your problems with monitoring are and that kind of stuff and we can um, make, make, make more awesome. Uh, so to give a rundown, we're going to go through, um, we're going to kind of give a little context about monitoring, um, kind of about the monitor, monitoring journey that I've been through in the past couple, uh, couple of years at Pantheon and how we've been able to, uh, to kind of create our platform. Going to go through some of the uh, basics of Sensu, kind of how to get installed, what installed, what the, uh, what the, um, architecture kind of looks like. And then we're going to kind of dig into some use cases. Um, uh, I've sprinkled some David Hasselhoff photos through my slides, so if you're paying attention, uh, there may be some something in it for you at the end, so kind of keep, keep counting the David Hasselhoffs. Also, <laughs> I want you kind of in the back of the mind while, while you're uh, kind of um, uh, listening to kind of think of your favorite dance move, uh, and that may come out later. And also kind of think about some of your use cases that are, um, you know, that are <laughs> uh, stuff you're thinking about. You know, what's hard to monitor? What's what's hard about building a team that kind of runs Drupal sites or you know runs stuff that um, people come to rely on? Um, uh, what are some of the kind of technical and human problems that you want help with? Um, and, uh, and, you know, we can kind of brainstorm together and maybe run through how Sensu might be able to help with some of those problems. Um, so when I'm thinking about, uh, when I'm thinking about Sensu, <laughs> kind of think, think, about, uh, think about it in different ways. So I think one, one thing I think about is all of the companies that are, that are getting value from running Sensu, right? We don't kind of do this just as, a, you know, just for fun. We do this. Uh, at the end of the day, because we're creating value for end users, we're creating, um, you know, systems and websites and platforms that people come to rely on and build their businesses on, and um, uh, and and so some of the um, some of the companies kind of that I work with in San Francisco are the kind of guys I hang out with. So we use it at Pantheon, um, Paperless Post, Opower, HipChat, um, D uh, DNS Simple, Pinterest. Um, kind of uh, a, <laughs> a ton of places that, that kind of uh, I know in the Bay Area and kind of from online, also all over the world. There's uh, um, at the local Prague DevOps meetup, you know, there are people running Sensu on hundreds of nodes. So it's, it's pretty cool to see that um, companies kind of all over the world in Silicon Valley and in Prague and kind of all over are, are actually um, using Sensu to create kind of uh, 
uh, platforms and systems that people rely on. Um, uh, um, an another way I, I think about Sensu is the community, right? It's kind of the people that make this happen, right? Whether it's the Drupal community or Sensu or kind of any other thing, it's, it's not really about the technology. Technology only goes so far, it's really about the people. So these are some of the um, uh, Sensu contributors. Um, so there's currently 92 uh, contributors and I would love to get 100. I just like the nice round number. So there's uh, you know, a couple slots down here on the bottom. And if anybody wants to kind of get their name up there, uh, their photo, that's, uh, I'd, I'd love to make that happen. Um, I help maintain the, the community plugins, which is kind of um, a you know, con contrib space where people can put, uh, put the different things they're, they're working on. Um, and this is a kind of GitHub site that's pulled directly out of the Git log for Sensu and kind of using their gravatars and stuff like that. Um, and then another way I think about, or that I think of when I think about Sensu is kind of the dashboard, right? So um, uh, with a tool that you use every day, uh, it, you know, and the dashboard is kind of the, the visual part of the tool that you're looking at. There's a lot going on in other scenes. You know, there's Ruby processes, there's the Rabbit AMQP bus, but you know, at the end of the day, what it means to kind of me uh, in operations and my team is kind of you know, loading this page a lot. Um, and there's kind of a couple different UIs that we'll get into, but this is kind of a nice lightweight one that um, we like to do, use because it's so simple. Um, and uh, I think it's, I think there's something about kind of um, that the visual interface to a, a, a system kind of mirrors the complexity or some of the ideals of the system itself. And so I think if you look at the, the dashboard, right, it's pretty easy to kind of tell what's going on here. Um, there's kind of, you know, you can click on it, get information. It's also kind of nice and dynamic, so you don't need to re reload the page and, and new alerts will pop up here. And I think that, that kind of simplicity and kind of elegance and um, kind of clean architecture that's mirrored visually is also mirrored in the, in the code itself and kind of the architecture of the system. Um, and uh, right, so, you know, kind of starting Pantheon and, and you know, kind of being an ops guy, it's, it's pretty clear that, you know, you want to monitor all the things. You want to monitor, you want to just go crazy and monitor everything, you know. That's, you want to, you want to know stuff is breaking way before your users do, you know, at the kind of slightest sign of anything going wrong. Um, uh, and so, you know, and that's kind of, um, to me, right, it's not in production unless it's monitored. Uh, and the only code that makes any, uh, that makes any money that adds any value is code that's running in production and then code that's monitored running in production. So to me, it's kind of, um, you know, without this final step, it's not really real. So uh, Sensu is something that really kind of lets me turn, you know, r really kind of cap off like going from idea through implementation coding and stuff like that into production. Um, how many people are, are familiar with Hubot, the kind of like uh, chat room bot? So uh, we kind of set one up and um, uh, it has this little meme gen plugin. So I made this slide by just doing meme gen me monitor all the things. Um, and I was thinking about doing all my slides like that, but uh, I, I thought it would probably go downhill. So I just, I just left it for this one. Um, and so I think one thing monitoring gives us uh, is it helps us build conceptual models. So, you know, uh, whether you're running kind of um, uh, one Drupal site or many, or you have one server or many, or kind of no matter what you're running, you know, humans don't really understand code, right? Like computers understand code. And so it's important as a human to kind of de actively develop your conceptual models of what your, your code is doing, kind of, um, you know, what your database is doing and what your application layer is doing and kind of all these different things. Um, and so the, uh, this is kind of an idea I stole from Coda Hale and his awesome uh, CodeConf talk a while ago that the map is not equal to the territory. And so the kind of Gandonkin experiment is which one of these is San Francisco? Any guesses? <laughs> and uh, yeah, none of them or all of them, right? So um, uh, the idea is that these are different representations of San Francisco. One, um, you know, one has terrain on it. One has more of the kind of streets. One is more of a 
you know, a, a photograph, a visual representation, but they all kind of have different layers of, of data associated with them, but none of these are actually San Francisco. You know, if, if you are kind of a, a hipster snob, you might um, want a, a neighborhood, um, a neighborhood map, and if you're on this side of the road, you're in Potrero Hill, and if you're on this side, you're in the Mission, and that might matter a lot more to you than, uh, you know, kind of what the terrain is or, or what it looks like from space. And so, Sensu is one tool, and um, and, and the more complex the system, the harder harder you have to work to kind of build these conceptual models. And then, you know, year, a couple of years ago, when kind of cloud systems uh, start being popularized, and now kind of with containerization and all, all of the platforms, the territory got a lot harder to map. You know, I think it's a pretty easy, cons or, you know, relatively easy conceptual model thinking of a data center. You can think of blinking lights and, and humming fans, and it's kind of like a nice ops dungeon in there, right? Like, you know, those are servers. You can kind of visualize the network cables going to them. But then in the cloud, you know, it's kind of harder to grasp your head around this. Then, you know, the nodes might be coming and going and um, maybe auto scaling or um, kind of different teams managing different sets of nodes for different sites. And it's kind of a lot harder to kind of think of what that actually means. And so the, the importance of monitoring um, uh, uh, increased recently with kind of the kind of cloud VMs and containerization stuff because it got that much harder as kind of operation staff and, and um, people, you know, running stuff uh, in production to actually kind of wrap your head around what that means. And so Sensu was kind of a tool born out, born out of this need for um, better, better tools to create those conceptual models of what we're actually doing here. Um, so kind of more kind of background. How many people are familiar with the monitoring sucks kind of meme? A couple. So this kind of came out a couple year, years ago in the sky, Lucis, uh, who's been in the ops community for, or kind of vocal ops community for a while, kind of, um, you know, kind of just had it. And he wrote this blog post that's like, these tool, monitoring sucks. These tools do not kind of meet my needs. Um, and I think it, it caught the kind of uh, operations community and infrastructure uh, um, tech ops kind of community right at the right point where a lot of people were encounter encountering these same problems with, uh, with um, kind of the cloud and, and the lack of tools to kind of support that stuff. Um, and so here are some other uh, kind of tweets and stuff. Um, Sean Porter kind of was like, oh, Nagia sucks. You know, it's just uh, like we can make it bearable, but but it's not, you know, it's not something that I love. It's not a tool that really kind of, you know, gives me the warm fuzzies and, and really uh, goes above and beyond. Um, Jason Dixon now works at GitHub, kind of echoing some of those same, same thoughts, and Jason Turnbull from Puppet kind of, again, going, um, echoing those same thoughts, like, you know, now's the time, kind of do something about it. We need to, you know, create these tools and make it better. Um, so there was a GitHub repo kind of born out of this that kind of collated a lot of the ideas and that kind of stuff. Um, links to some of the blogs here. And then the, um, the top tweet here by Sean Porter, Porter Tech. So he's the guy that actually created Sensu. And I didn't, I didn't, uh, I'd never seen this tweet until I was kind of researching for this talk, but I thought it was kind of cool that, uh, you know, kind of memorialized in Twitter kind of some of those emotions that actually led to um, this great tool. Um, so, um, so, sh uh, Sean, um, uh, lives in Vancouver and kind of was working at a company, company called Sony in which after this time, realizing the need, realizing that the community kind of needed a solution, um, was able to kind of start investing in kind of this idea that, that became what Sensu is today. Um, so around this time, all, the, all these different, um, kind of a Cambrian explosion of uh, a lot of different kind of specialization. There was an obvious market opportunity. So here are some of the, um, some of the kind of projects that came out of that. Some of these are open source, um, gray log, uh, log stash, um, that kind of stuff. Some of them are SaaS, right? PagerDuty, New Relic. Um, and, uh, um, and so I think um, Sensu definitely kind of is, uh, you know, open source tool. You know, Pantheon is kind of SaaS pass kind of model. You know, a lot of people here are kind of, um, you know, all standing on the shoulders of giants, but also making money. And, um, and so um, at Pantheon, I think we take a very pragmatic approach um, um, to some of this stuff. You know, so we 
invest a lot in Sensu and our kind of infrastructure monitoring like that. We also have over a thousand pingdom checks that get programmatically created every time you uh, uh, create a paying site. So um, I think there's great stuff about open source and a lot of these solutions. We use New Relic on almost every site on Pantheon as well. And um, um, a, lo a lot of really great services here. So I think the, the main point isn't um, necessarily open source versus SaaS. It's just that there was a market opportunity that the community really kind of came together around. And there's a lot of great tools that came out of this space. And so I think um, kind of in my particular context at Pantheon, um, Sensu makes a lot of sense. But uh, for other people, um, it might not make sense for everyone, right? Uh, or it might just be kind of a part of a hybrid solution that involves both o open source and kind of SaaS monitoring. Um, a lot of good things about all of those. And I don't think, uh, with Sensu, I don't think monitoring sucks anymore, but monitoring is still really hard. I, you know, this is, uh, I think it's especially kind of at scale, um, you know, when they're, you know, kind of create a, a system that's large enough, you start to kind of see complex behaviors um, where, you, you know, you couldn't even really imagine that this part of the system would influence that, but sure enough, somehow that's able to happen. Um, you know, monitoring is not about the tool. It's really about creating a team uh, that, can, that can deal with the escalations, right? If you could monitor stuff great and you just sent the alerts like, you know, into space, that's not really monitoring, right? You need to send those alerts to a human who can deal with them, fix the problem, get the site back online, get the service back online, and get the end, end users um, receiving that value again. Um, getting, uh, getting more people on call. I think every organization needs more people on call. This is a very difficult ask, and it's something that um, um, I think, yeah, uh, re requires, a, is a hard problem to solve. Asking people to um, be on call, to kind of wake up in the night, to kind of really own, own the um, service that you're delivering um, is a tough ask, and it's really important to kind of create this system around that that makes this possible. There's a lot of great things about getting more of the company invested in really the day-to-day -day stuff. Um, I think, you know, whether you're a Dribbble shop or a platform or a host or anything like that, the world we live in is, you know, uh, uh, as Scott said, colleague Scott Massey said in his talk, um, you know, this isn't like a fling with a site, right? You're kind of marrying these sites, right? You want them to be online, not just, uh, you know, not just for a day or the day you deliver them, right? You want to be, be, them to be online, responding, delivering value, being performant, like from now until forever, till you know, nobody cares about the site and it goes to where, you know, old sites go. Um, making, uh, making alerts actionable. So the other thing is uh, Sensu makes it really easy to create alerts and that doesn't mean they're necessarily actionable, right? So, um, uh, <laughs> Uh, kind of the, you know, the sky is falling, the sky is falling, what am I going to do, uh, is not very helpful, right? You just, it just kind of gets your heart rate going and you are no better off than you were before. So instead of just the sky is falling, I would kind of like someone to come to me and say, you know, there's a meteor, uh, it's about 500 kilograms, it's about, you know, 36 inches in diameter, it's hurtling towards Earth at about, you know, 1,000 miles an hour, and um, if you can just step right to the left, yeah. That's good. So it's important to make sure if, if stuff's breaking, you, uh, your, your monitoring alerts help you fix that. Um, uh, Chris mentioned the other day kind of about, so Sensu is probably a great way to create a, a monitoring fatigue. And I'm like, it is an excellent way. So um, again, the, the technology does what it does, but you, you as a human and as kind of part of a team uh, really need to figure out how to make alerts actionable and make sure that you really don't get alerts when you don't need to. And so I spend a large amount of my time just figuring out how to, you know, get one alert instead of two or prevent that one kind of little bit, that, um, that alert you got in the night that you really didn't need to wake up for. And so there are some tricks we'll go into later with Sensu that kind of help you, help you fight uh, monitoring fatigue, which is a constant problem when you want to be very finely tuned into what your system is doing. And then lastly, um, you know, the, like, right, the ops team, maybe the people on the call, whatever, are just kind of a small part of an organization. And so you do have to kind of create that organizational change where I, we kind of call it like the pull the red cord metaphor, which um, uh, comes out of um, uh, some of the Japanese production, Toyota production system, uh, where 
you, you know, a, a, as someone who's on call, who's doing the monitoring, you are hooked into a, the system the way no one else is. And if you're able to kind of say, you know what, guys, like we need to, uh, we need to all stop what we're doing and think about this, kind of halt the production line. And, and that's really important because, um, you know, you're hooked into the system, you might see this database query that's, you know, not doing well. And, you know, maybe you can fix that query, maybe you can restart MySQL, whatever it is, right? But more likely, you're going to need to um, kind of work with a client. You can't just stop that query, right? You need to kind of figure out why that query, you know, what data were you trying to access with that query? Um, maybe, you know, you need to buy new hardware, right? Maybe you need to switch hosts. Um, and then that gets the kind of business involved and the kind of financial guys involved and stuff. So creating an organization where um, uh, ops team monitoring is really just kind of the leading edge, kind of the, you know, they have the, the, their finger, finger on the pulse and they're the ones that are able to like actually go through the organization and, and figure out how to make those changes is super important. Um, some things I do and don't do with Sensu, a little disclaimer. So, operate a bunch, uh, a bunch of Drupal sites. Um, and I think there's kind of a saving grace in that at, at Pantheon. It, it's, um, I, you know, I think it's an impressive member. Technically, we have a two-person ops team, um, although all the, all the other technical, technical team uh, is, is really part of the ops team as well. But um, so in some ways, it's actually easier to operate a lot of sites because you really need to automate and you really need to have tight tolerances and kind of be strict about this stuff. Um, so in addition to kind of managing these servers and, and boxes and containers and Drupal sites and stuff, you know, the human elements, kind of manage the operations team, manage the on-call team and some of those processes. Um, I was looking at our PagerDuty account, which is hooked into Sensu, and we've handled over 15,000 incidents in like two years, which if you do the math is like constantly, basically. So, um, <laughs> uh, um, that, yeah, so that, you know, basically, um, Sensu is something that kind of, you know, connects me to this, to this service, um, uh, you know, to kind of these servers, these, this value, this platform. And so Sensu is kind of really my, um, kind of, you know, conduit to kind of how, what the platform's doing at every, any given time. Um, and I help maintain the uh, <laughs> Sensu community uh, uh, plugins, some of the contributions. And so I, I, I think, um, a good kind of note here is that I don't write much Sensu core code. It's actually really not that much code, a couple hundred lines, but um, you know, community is a lot more and, and, and contributing to a project is a lot more than writing code, right? It's, so I, you know, I'm doing stuff like this, like I think one of <laughs> the most valuable things I can do and, and the one most valuable things anyone can do in open source is just be excited and um, get other people excited and kind of create some, you know, some workflows and, um, uh, and point people in the right direction and stuff. And so um, I've kind of really liked kind of, you know, it's also fun and open source, right? Nobody makes these roles, right? They don't kind of assign you as this and that. You kind of just step up and, you know, bite something off. And, um, and so it's kind of cool to see how those uh, um, uh, roles evolve. Um, and I think, I forget the name of the law that um, the, uh, products created by, by an organization kind of reflect the, the um, the organizational structure. So I think that's very applicable and open source and cool that I think Sensu kind of reflects that um, open source and distributed um, and kind of volunteer uh, um, mentality. Um, and this has kind of helped, you know, so this is kind of shaping my journey with Sensu, my journey with monitoring DevOps over the past couple of years. Um, so I don't manage thousands of servers. Um, I, uh, I work with people that do use uh, Sensu on that kind of scale. It, um, uh, at Pinterest and cloud and um, places like that. Um, and I don't operate life or death mission critical services and I'm really glad about that because um, I think there's a lot of parallels between kind of, um, you know, operations and other on-call kind of emergency services people. But I think at the end of the day, as much as high availability is critical to our end users, um, uh, I, it, it's not a life or death situation. And that's important, a little bit of context when you're doing this stuff, because it may seem like the end of the world sometimes. Um, so that's kind of the context. So everyone can kind of take a nice, raise your hands up, a little stretch in the back. Someone get them up. Ugh. Okay. <laughs> Uh, 
Um, let's see, so we're gonna run through some of the architecture. Um, uh, so Sensu Server, so, uh, so Sensu is Ruby-based and kind of the key of it is using RabbitMQ to talk to all the clients. So up here, kind of you have a Sensu Server, you have some Sensu clients, and RabbitMQ is the thing that's connecting them. So RabbitMQ is, uh, is a message bus, and it's cool because one way you can look at Sensu is kind of really just an operations router. Um, so um, kind of in this case, uh, the queue model, there might be three queues. You might have an all queue, a web servers queue, and a databases queue. And um, the, the clients can, can connect to different queues. So uh, the uh, client one would be connected to the web servers and the all queue. Client two would be connected to the databases servers and the all queue. And with Sensu, you're able to uh, ask, um, kind of publish a request for uh, maybe all servers to check on their disk versus just database servers to check on the database or web servers to check on Nginx and PHP. So that's kind of um, some of the architecture uh, um, that Sensu's based on. Um, it's pretty easy to get up, <laughs> up and running. It's, it's got a, what's called an omnibus install. Um, and so this creates an entire separate directory. So it's kind of opt Sensu, and there's good packages for, uh, for Debian and Fedora and Ubuntu and stuff. And this is nice because the Ruby that you're using is entirely separate than your system Ruby. It's entirely self-contained, so it's easy to get started. Um, this was kind of designed by a colleague at Pantheon, Joe Miller. Um, I think one, one kind of uh, strong suggestion I'd have if anybody's getting into this is uh, use config management for, for Sensu and for, for monitoring. The whole reason you set up monitoring is to increase the reliability of your production systems. And if you can't rely on your monitoring, uh, it kind of defeats the purpose. And configuration management um, is something, you know, Chef, Puppet, Ansible, I don't really care what it is, but as, if you're, as long as you're not doing by this, this by hand, that's what will give you the confidence so that you can rely on um, on your monitoring, on your systems, and on the value that you're giving your end customers. Um, there's great uh, chef and puppet support, um, so that can kind of get you going. Um, and uh, those are also good ways to kind of contribute as you're getting up and running. So that everyone know, like the snowflake, so to me, like a, every snowflake is unique, whereas when you're running servers, you don't want unique so snowflakes, or Drupal sites for that matter, right? If you're gonna run a lot of anything, you want them to look very similar. Um, uh, if not identical. So a good way to get started with Sensu, this is kind of uh, to get up and running, right? So you can play around with Vagrant, you know, EC2, kind of, you know, see how it feels to you um, and that kind of stuff. Um, you probably, you may, if you already have monitoring, such as Nagios or something, a great way is to run Sensu just alongside, you know, alongside Nagios and maybe don't actually send those alerts out, but just start using the dashboard and get a feel for it. And uh, it's kind of, in Chris's talk the other day, you know, you want to make the other people on your team jealous that they're, you know, using, a, a, you know, they're um, kind of not using the cool dashboard and, and the, really easy to write those checks and stuff like that. So once you have it running in parallel, you get some buy-in from your team, some interest, then you can kind of swap out your old, um, old setup and be going with Sensu. Um, yeah, I've never used Nagio, so. Um, Pantheon is only using Sensu. Uh, Pantheon has never used Nagios. We, we do use Pingdom and other kind of third-party SaaS stuff for monitoring, but um, so I kind of, it kind of came well in the, in the Pantheon timeline that it, uh, we knew we kind of had this problem, didn't really want to go down the Nagios road and um, had, this, had uh, the ability to jump in with Sensu. So to give you a bit better feel of what's going on, um, uh, kind of under the hood, we can write a check. So a check is what runs that checks on the health of a particular system. So in this case, we're going to check that the directory uh, etc exists, which, you know, of course it always should, but we'll just go ahead and write in check. So this one's in PHP. You can write them in really any language, which is pretty cool. A lot of the con uh, community contributed ones are in Ruby, but, you know, you can write them in shell or um, PHP or Python or really whatever you're familiar with. Below is the configuration, um, and you can see kind of some, some stuff that it's gonna be handled by the email. We kind of put the command that we want, want the executable to run. We want it to run every 60 seconds. And then in here, you'll also see some kind of funny things. Expect dancing, true. If you have an Etsy directory, it's pretty much a dance-worthy occasion. Um, 
you know, and, uh, and then Yeti, true. So the kind of point here is that the configuration is done with JSON, and you can really stick in anything you want into the JSON. For example, this playbook attribute is something that's not really at all part of Sensu, but something that we put in every check. And that playbook is a, a URL of a wiki page that describes how to um, uh, resolve or look into or debug that particular check. And so that's, that's kind of a step we've t made to make the alert actionable. Um, so the, the, I think of the checks as kind of commodities of detection. So it's totally compatible with all existing Nagios plugins that are totally battle tested and have been um, in use for years. Uh, there's lots of Sensu community plugins and you can even use um, kind of any command line tool that this is, you know, in bash that'll return the exit code. So it's really just going off of like classic Unix, Unix principles, standard out, standard error, and the exit code. Um, yes. Um, checking on time. So, um, you know, this is kind of a box of... Uh, of smoke detectors, right? So one of these smoke detectors isn't really better than the other. It certainly took some engineering work to figure out how to, you know, trap the kind of molecules and, and detect that there's smoke and sound and alert. But, you know, um, uh, in Sensu, uh, I think that checks are kind of commodities. You know, there's a great kind of check. There's checks both in kind of Sensu Contrib and Nagios for checking on an HTTP response, right? And nobody's going to be like, Hey bro, my um, you know check for HD, HDP 200 is way better than yours, right? Those are all kind of um, uh, all the same, um, despite that there is some engineering going into it. And so I think in this you know in this image with this bucket of smoke detectors, right? Um, it's less about kind of what one individual smoke detector does or doesn't, but if you're managing you know um, a conference center like this or a um, uh, uh, a university or something like that. It's really about how do you know which, um, which smoke detectors are going off and how do you make it actionable to kind of get someone there to deal with it um, if there is an issue. Um, so then kind of the other side of it, there's checks and handlers. Um, and so handlers uh, are kind of the things that are on the escalation path. So if the check marks something as um, unhealthy, a handler is how that gets to a human to deal with it, a human or other system. And so again, we'll kind of write one in PHP. This one's just gonna read from standard in, again, kind of using some of the um, kind of uh, common sense you know, principles. Gets a JSON blob over standard in, we'll decode that, pull out the name of the script and uh, just use the mail function to kind of mail it off to us. So this is kind of a, a simple example, but um, gives you an idea how easy it is to write a handler. And the magic of Sensu is really in the handlers. Again, the checks are kind of just checks, and they're, they're you know making sure websites are responding with the right code in the right amount of time, and making sure that the disk is okay and stuff like that. Um, but with the handlers, that's where you're really able to implement something I coined as ops logic. So this is business logic for your ops team, right? So this is, this is for your business what escalation paths make sense. So this might be you start at the CEO and go down. This might be you send to everyone at once. This might be you kind of pick a random person. This might be um, you send to multiple services. This might be that during the day it goes to the engineering team at night to the ops team. And so Sensu's kind of the magic of Sensu for me is that um, given the kind of human the, the difficulty of kind of the human sides of monitoring that are building the team building the escalation policies, making them actionable. Um, the flexibility of Sensu handlers makes it really easy to kind of develop interesting kind of business logic and ops logic workflows there. Um, so in this kind of example, the check is run on the Sensu client. Uh, it sends a result uh, that's just JSON back through RabbitMQ. Uh, again, just JSON and there's a kind of opportunity to filter out ones we don't want. So maybe that is, um, uh, maybe those are ones that we've explicitly said, hey, I'm, I'm working on the server, I know it's bad, you don't need to alert me about it. Maybe it's, um, maybe it's one that are subdued for kind of off hours, that kind of stuff. An opportunity to mutate the JSON if it needs to be tweaked for the handler at all, which we'll talk about. And then sent to the handlers, which are the scripts like we just wrote to actually kind of trigger the escalation paths.
So before we wrote a quick handler, now we're gonna write an awesome handler. And this is kind of where the ops logic comes in, right? So the top of this is exactly the same as it was before, but in the bottom, we're gonna um, use some of those custom attributes that made sense for our business, for our, our use cases, to kind of show off some of the flexibility of Sensu. So here, um, we pull out of the JSON, um, uh, you know, if we're expecting Yetis and if we're expecting dancing. And if there might be yeti Yetis, we, uh, we trigger an automatic, um, <laughs> API driven thing to go buy some Yeti, some party hats from Amazon, uh, cause Yetis love party hats. And if, you know, we should expect dancing, you know, we'll trigger the function to get on our dancing shoes. And so, um, you know, I don't know what the check was here, but, uh, you know, <laughs> if your Etsy directory exists, you know, already we have the shipment coming from Amazon and, you know, our servers are wearing their dancing shoes. Um, and so this is just kind of some of the flexibility of uh, how uh, handlers and Sensu can work with your business's needs to escalate properly. Um, do you guys know what GIMP is? The open source image editing thing? Uh, I spent about two hours trying to make an animated GIF uh, infrastructure <laughs> diagram. <laughs> and then it crashed, but I did manage to get this, uh, and it still looks a, a little wonky, but I'm still pretty proud of myself. Um, thank you. <laughs> I was gonna even put them on GitHub, but now I, I'm not quite sure where this is gonna go. Might need to take a break from GIMP. Um, so this is kind of illustrating the um, kind of fan out publishing model. So again, leveraging RabbitMQ, one of the things it can do is called fan out. And so uh, for the all servers case, the check comes in, comes from Sensu server, gets to RabbitMQ, and then RabbitMQ publishes that to everyone listening on that queue. So in, in the all case, it goes to both servers. If the server were to publish uh, a blue dot, uh, but instead GIMP crashed, that would only go you know, on the web server queue, and only the web servers would run that check to check that particular um, part of the system. Um, kind of in some of these diagrams, the Sensu API is kind of like floating out in the middle of nowhere. Um, and at first I'm like, well, that's weird. Why is that just like floating out there? But, uh, and, um, and kind of the, the Redis, uh, so that's kind of a little Redis data store. But then I'm like, actually, I think that kind of speaks well to Sensu. Uh, one of the great things about Sensu architecture is that it's very decoupled. And so I mentioned the um, user interface before, and there's really nothing special about that user interface. It just happens to use the API, which is a REST API, to generate the dashboard, um, you know, a visual representation of, kind of what RabbitMQ is doing and, and what data has been stored in Sensu or uh, Redis. So you'll kind of see them floating out there, but they're, they're doing, you know, they're doing their thing. Um, oh, another kind of tidbit, and hopefully this will be an aha moment, is that sensu is a Japanese word for fan. And so the, the whole kind of model of, uh, of sensu from conception was using this kind of fan out model uh, with exchanges and queues to publish the, um, publish checks to, to multiple different um, uh, clients. So we're going to kind of get into some use cases for Sensu here. So these are kind of um, specific things you might encounter or um, kind of little kind of cool things of why, why Sensu works well. So auto registration. So if you're growing your fleet, right, you're, maybe you're auto scaling out, maybe you're just adding servers regularly, um, that kind of stuff. You want the server to be monitored as soon as it can be, right? As soon as it's online, you want it to start being monitored. Um, and with some traditional tools, that can be a little hard because you have to kind of maybe send back your IP address or kind of Puppet or Chef has to run and see what all your nodes are and then kind of write out configuration files and restart Nagios or something like that. So because Sensu is using the RabbitMQ, um, as soon as a client connects to the queue, it is being monitored. So all it, it uses SSL uh, certificates to connect to the queue. Um, and uh, as soon as it connects, it's, it's being monitored. Um, I was thinking like, what's hard about registration? And then I was thinking about DrupalCon and this is the photo from Munich. And I'm like, yeah, registration is hard. If you ask anybody, you know, with the association or running this stuff, right? 
who are these people? What do they want? Are they authenticated? Are they supposed to be here? Why are they here? What specifically are they trying to get out of this? Do they have a role? That kind of stuff. And so all of that is baked into just kind of the very initial um, connections of the client on Sensu. And then the other kind of like, hello, my name is I2843A. You know, like we're not dealing with even, you know, people with names here. I think increasingly kind of servers are being, you know, um, VMs, containers are kind of, um, kind of nameless resources, entities, and that makes that problem even a little more difficult. Um, Keep alive checks. So this is a default check. So again, as soon as you c connect to RabbitMQ, um, the Sensu server will recognize that, and periodically will send a check that will <laughs> that will check to see if the node is alive or dead. And so this happened. This is configurable. Kind of how often it happens, when it sends a warning, when it sends a critical. And so again, as soon as um, as soon as it connects to RabbitMQ, its, uh, it's kind of role is defined, it's authenticated, it's made, made sure that it's um, kind of up and online. And there's like a lot of different checks you can do on a server, IO weight, you know, whatever, um, inodes, CPU usage, uh, kind of on and on, right? But like the most fundamental one is like, is this client, um, you know, am I able to communicate with this client, right? That's kind of the most basic, uh, you know, basic part of any system is kind of communication. And so the keep alive kind of keeps an eye on the clients to make sure they're um, um, alive. And a keep alive will fire if like the load average spikes so high that the, the client like isn't able to actually handle the, handle the keep alive and, and respond back okay. It'll happen, you know, if the server goes down, of course. It'll happen if there's a net split or kind of other, you know, networking issue that's breaking communication. Um, so that's kind of uh, auto registration and keep lives are great when you're kind of adding servers, but a thing that becomes quick, uh, quickly becomes pretty noisy is deleting servers. And again, you want that server to be monitored right up until the point where you don't want it to be monitored. And, um, and so, you know, typically what happens is when you take a cloud node down or something, it can fire off a bunch of alerts and be like, hey, this node isn't like, I can't ping it anymore. Um, and getting back to like alert fatigue and that kind of stuff. If you just deleted that server or it auto scaled down, you know, you do not want to be re receiving, you know, kind of panic freak out the server is down messages, right? So one kind of pattern in, um, and Sensu is to use the idea of like a gold record, right? A uh, canonical source of data. So this might be Chef, this might be the EC2 API, this might be a different um, uh, source of record or other kind of API. And what you can do is when the keep alive check fires um, in the handlers, you can kind of you know, check that uh, gold, you know, that source of record and say, hey, should this node be up or should this node be down? And if the node should be up and it's alerting, you can escalate that. If the node um, was purposely taken down and it's alerting, you can kind of just remove it from Sensu and not worry about that. Um, uh, uh, again, kind of building the conceptual models with monitoring, um, uh, metrics are a huge part of that, right? Just visual representations of the performance and kind of variability of the different systems. Um, and so, you know, another, another thing that's becoming more apparent is kind of whether they're metrics, data points, they're log messages, they're check failures, that kind of stuff. They're all, you know, they're all pretty similar, right? It's kind of an event that's happening, um, kind of data about your system. And there's lots of things you want to reuse, right? So um, you want to reuse uh, kind of for metrics collection and, and checking failures and logging. You might want to reuse um, uh, kind of the transport mechanism. So in this case, that's RabbitMQ and it works really well. You might want to reuse um, the authentication. Again, that's kind of built in with SSL into RabbitMQ. Um, you might want to use some of the handlers or escalation, that kind of flexible logic where maybe these metrics go to um, Graphite and these metrics go to uh, Librato or Datadog or something like that. Um, so we, we use uh, Sensu extensively for this, and so if you look on our, uh, the Pantheon's public status page, there's some kind of uh, public metrics which are kind of uh, um, ushered out of this Sensu workflow. So this is um, a graph of our database, uh, or our, sorry, Valhalla um, file system uh, server side successful requests. Um, 
another cool thing you can do once you're kind of using, using Senso in that fashion, uh, you have some data in Graphite or something like that. Um, so Graphite has these awesome post, uh, kind of post-processing tools, right? So the, um, the solid green and the dotted red lines are um, load average, ones from today and ones from yesterday. And then the, bl the blue um, area graph is on the other axis. And that's saying, that's showing, representing um, how much higher the load average is today than it was yesterday. And then it's really easy with Sensu to alert off, um, off that difference. And so uh, when you're monitoring kind of at scale or kind of all this stuff, um, it's hard to kind of look at maybe ev um, every one server you want and that kind of creates mon uh, alert fatigue, tons of, tons of stuff to monitor. So what you can do is kind of use your, um, use Graphite as a way to collect metrics, kind of do some nice little post-processing and then you can get kind of cool high level checks about like, hey, is, you know, is this thing worse than it was yesterday? And actually kind of alert that through the escalation path if something weird is going on. Um, uh, and then a kind of another kind of uh, pillar of DevOps or something is you want your uh, monitoring to hook, be hooked in with your metrics. And so this is about creating, making them actionable. And if you just get an alert, it's not nearly as rich as if you can get an alert, have it link to this page, load this up, look at what the load average is now, look at what it was before and visually kind of see that very clearly. Also there's kind of, I put in a red line and that, um, you know, that's a very clear, understandable metaphor of uh, what's going on here. And, you know, if you opened, you know, if you got a page and op opened this kind of, kind of groggy late at night or something, you'd be like, oh, well, I did cross the threshold, but not by that much, right? And, and it's going down. Um, so that, that would be a very different, you know, this graph is able to inform you of that. Whereas if you just get the alert, you know, maybe you, you don't know and it's harder to get this data and harder to actually take action. Um, so kind of getting in a little bit more into this uh, um, processing pipeline, the kind of flexibility, the power of Sensu. Um, so the kind of mutator function. So when the, the clients send back the result of the check, it's kind of a, uh, a, a JSON representation. So that'll have information about the client, what the IP is, what the name, stuff like the timestamp. It'll have information about the check, about kind of which check it was, the check history, if it's been passing and failing, that kind of stuff. Um, and when you're using metrics, you kind of want to, you want to get the metrics into Graphite or wherever you want to get, get, get them. In this case, Graphite accepts kind of, it doesn't accept JSON in the Sensu format. It accepts kind of a much cleaner kind of text format. And so what you can use is uh, a mutator, which will just um, take the JSON in, mutate it, and, and pass out something else. So in this case, it's taking the whole JSON check uh, representation. It's just taking the output that the script we ran on each client uh, spit out to standard out and it's passing that. And what this does is it, is it allows um, the handler to just be a direct TCP connection to Graphite. So um, it doesn't need to kind of um, uh, do anything fancy. It can just kind of mutate it slightly and then shovel it right into Graphite, which is, uh, um, makes things scale and perform a little bit better. Um, so, yeah, some other kind of use cases, right? I want this check to, and kind of what the filter does. I want this check, you know, I want to know about it during the day, but this like really should not wake me up. You know, this should not annoy me and my wife when I'm at dinner. This should not, um, you know, go off while I'm jogging, at, you know, before work. Um, so there's kind of built in kind of subdue functionality, which is really just a f uh, kind of filter in this workflow that if the current time is less than, or you know, outside of these bounds, uh, just drop it on the floor. Um, check dependencies. So this is another um, uh, kind of important one, right? Uh, you don't want it so clippy over here saying one alert is better than two. Um, so maybe you have a kind of a private, you know, maybe you have multiple interfaces like a private network and a public network and you're monitoring both with pings. If that server goes down, you don't need, you don't need to, you know, you don't need the keep alive and the private and the public ping or something, right? Um, so 
you can kind of use a very simple dependency model to say like, hey, if there's already you know, a failure for ping or keep alive or something like that, don't worry about escalating this, I've, I've got it. And that kind of, um, yeah, more of like the sky is falling when your phone is just kind of like hopping off the table, vibrating, and it's not really helpful. Um, so this kind of creates, you know, saying you can see what the problem is, you know, make it actionable, good, good uh, metadata to get um, more debugging information and go on from there. Another cool part of Sensu um, uh, use case that was designed around is this idea of a push workflow. So each client listens on localhost 3030. It's all configurable. You can send in with TCP or UDP. And so what we're going to do here is um, just uh, so we're going to use netcat. We're going to use a kind of little little spit in a little JSON to netcat in there. So this is going to say, hey. Um, just going to push this event in there, and status two means critical. So this would push push through the Sensu client, through RabbitMQ, back up to the server, and get handled appropriately. So this is cool stuff, and this is really what I want um, some of everyone's expertise here with is kind of integrating with this, this with Drupal. So this could be um, failed login, like kind of any event, any action that happens. So it could be maybe failed logins or kind of anything that's going into Watchdog could maybe also go here, go through escalation path. Uh, love to get some help kind of thinking through some of that stuff. Um, um, you know, maybe someone, every time an administrator logs in, I don't, I don't know, you know, kind of whatever that um, workflow is that uh, kind of to, to detect those events and trigger that escalation workflow. Um, and it's just really easy to do. So like my colleague Joe Miller was at his bachelor party in Las Vegas the other day, and I um, made one. Of, <laughs> I did this and set him as the kind of escalation target. And I said, "Critical, you are not having enough drinks," and kind of sent it through the system. And um, I'm not sure if he appreciated that, but I thought it was pretty funny. <laughs> and so, um, <laughs> yeah, Sensu going above and beyond. Um, uh, like a, a loosely homogeneous fleet. So again, right, Drupal sites, servers, kind of anything. It's better, you know, instead of snowflakes, if they're, um, you know, more homogeneous. But I'm a practical man, um, and sometimes not everything looks the same, right? Maybe that you have a couple servers and one client is paying for a much bigger server than the other ones. Maybe, um, uh, you know, maybe you just kind of, um, the servers you have are kind of, you got them every year, so they have slightly different performance characteristics, that kind of stuff. Maybe in this case, right, they're all, you don't want snowflakes, but you probably want every server to have a different, you know, MySQL password or something like that. And so Sensu kind of has some nice, uh, nice ideas of client um, attribute substitution. So a good ex <laughs> example here, could, we could just put in that Yeti and it would, uh, when it ran the check, pass that as the command line arg. So this kind of, um, uh, if you can't have everything I identical, like all owls, you know, sometimes you have a cat in there, but Sensu can, uh, Sensu can, can kind of handle that. Um, and you really want uh, more homogeny for your sanity, but in the, pro in the real world, right, things aren't all exactly the same. Um, yeah, I mentioned about the API. So this is a little uh, Adam Jacob from Ops Code head saying, you need an API. And really, an API is a critical part of any, um, any infrastructure, especially open source infrastructure. And what, uh, uh, what an API does is it creates, um, you know, um, uh, right, an interface that, that pe people can build off. And this is some of the, um, um, so Sensu has this nice little REST API, very concise, very easy to use. So you can publish check requests on specific servers. You can kind of create, add, delete, update clients. Um, you can uh, look at the histories. You can kind of add little data snippets that the clients and servers used to talk to each other. Um, and this is what also uh, enables uh, like kind of multiple UIs. So there's a Hubot plugin that hits the API. There's a, um, you know, we have our dashboard, you know, kind of wall boards that just read from the API. We have the kind of web interface that we load um, and that. And so with the API really kind of decouples like innovation. And, uh, and that's another kind of core tenant of Sensu that the, the code base is very kind of extensible and small and it allows you to configure it and you to add the flexibility without kind of growing the core very much. And yeah, if any system where the UI is very tightly coupled to the um, kind of the core purpose makes it, uh, I, um, 
really hard to kind of innovate on, I think, in, in particular because it's so, visual representations are so different than, you know, kind of what's under the hood. Some more little kind of sensu snippets. So you can aggregate ac across clients. So you can kind of mark a check as something you want to aggregate. And this would be like, oh, 125 clients are okay, 10 are, uh, <laughs> 10 are warning, and one is unknown, and kind of, um, and so one thing you can do, if you have events that happen kind of all at, um, all at once, or you really want kind of a higher level view, instead of having each client escalate through PagerDuty or whatever, you can kind of um, use this facility to kind of, um, to, a aggregate the results of all those checks across your entire fleet, and then you can have a check that says, hey, let me know if more than two of my web servers are not functioning or something like that. If your load balancer is able to take out um, crippled web servers, uh, it's easy to kind of write a check that says, hey, as long as I have more than a couple uh, good web servers back there, let me sleep through the night, I'll deal with it in the morning. Yeah, so like I think that's pretty common, pretty common theme here, right? So another one is kind of um, because you can kind of, and there's some good examples of this in the community, using Sensu to actually trigger remediation programmatically. So this is a, a, a screenshot from our Kibana kind of logging data, and so some of this is done through Sensu and some of it is not. But um, if there's um, if Sensu detects a failure, in certain cases, it will just itself trigger a, trigger a remedi remediation step for that. And then if that doesn't work, it'll escalate it up to a human. But if this is something that happens occasionally, um, so in, in these cases are kind of um, restarting, uh, restarting PHP or um, restarting a file mount kind of happens occasionally. This is over several days. You can see there's kind of clusters of it. Um, and so that's kind of another use case that the flexibility of Sensu handlers can kind of help you kind of work that workflow in as well. Um, some good uh, sense, some good resources online. Um, uh, there's a users group. All the code's on GitHub. IRC is a friendly place. Would love to see you guys there. There's some good presentations. Um, if you kind of Google around, they're on the sensuapp.org. Um, and... Uh, yeah, so contributing, you know, we, um, if this is something you guys are interested in in at all, um, it's definitely kind of easy to contribute. You know, don't worry about the Ruby thing. Like, we'll get some PHP checks in there. We'll get anything anything you want. Just really excited to get more people using this, more kind of use cases flushed out, kind of business use cases or technical use cases or anything like that. Um, and... Uh, yeah, I really want kind of like some more kind of Drupal specific stuff into Sensu because I think it, it could be a it could be a good match. So excited to um, uh, see what you guys have have to say about that. And uh, thank you guys so much. Um, I'm happy to kind of answer a couple. Uh, I don't think we have too much time, but a, a couple questions. Grab me after. Um, love to talk about this stuff. So thank you guys for listening so much. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, so the question is uh, kind of in addition to using metrics and graphite to look at uh, data kind of over time and kind of more statistical processing, uh, do we use any other tools? So it, uh, currently we don't. I think the, 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 uh, the metrics are very, uh, or the, yeah, the graphs and the metrics are very important um, data to have for a lot of reasons. And so that was kind of just one example of um, leveraging the processing power of graphite, which we already have in place, to kind of do some nice alerting. Um, uh, I think there are great solutions, um, uh, kind of Riemann or um, um, uh, uh, more kind of event processing stuff that, that could handle pretty complex use cases. Um, 
And then a, another aspect is um, because of the, the push model, you can really have arbitrarily complex um, processing. And then if it detects anything, it, it sends an event through the push. Yeah, yeah. Or, or ex yeah, external tools, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's, it is a hard, um, a hard balance between having features and having an easy out of the gate, but also having very complete. So I think Sensu um, is very flexible and, and offers a, a good solution out of the gate, but you know, by the time you're using this at scale and have those kind of interesting use cases, you're gonna probably want something that's um, a little more specific built. And Sensu can probably help you with that, um, with some aspects of that. Um, uh, do you have a, a suggestion for kind of that um, learning the behavior of a machine? No, I don't. And I think that's very interesting. And um, um, uh, I think for, especially for bigger systems, I think that's kind of a very interesting kind of, uh, kind of emergent behavior and, and kind of stuff like that. Um, it's really beyond the power of kind of simple graphing or a human um, to, to really kind of get their head around that. So you're going to need to leverage uh, kind of some external tools. We can chat about it, but. Anyone else? Any? Um... I, am. Uh, I just wanted to know that you mentioned about Rabbit uh, MQ and yep. uh, Redis. Do they need to run? Sorry. Do they need to run locally with the uh, sensor? Uh, yes, you do. So, I th and that's why. Um, uh, that's why this is an advanced talk. It's like um, it. It. It's kind of. Um, there's great chef and puppet for it, um, and. And so if you're not using Chef and Puppet, it is kind of, in, it, it, it's, uh, you know, kind of intimidating to set up because there are those moving parts. Um, and, it, and it does, because Sensu is so um, conceptually based on that fan out model that you really do need to run the RabbitMQ to, kind of, to even for a proof of concept. But there is, and I have a link um, uh, kind of on the, uh, oh, uh, um, this chef monitor one, there should be some pretty vagrant compatible stuff where you can um, pretty much just do kind of vagrant up and get a running environment, you know, VM on your local box with the dashboard and Rabbit and Redis and a server and a client and you're able to kind of test it. So that's kind of the, the route that I would go to get started. Okay. Can you load balance uh, the sensor service? Yeah, so you can, it's, uh, it's a little bit different than web load balancing, but you can run multiple. And again, because of that, um, um, so you could set rat, rabbit up in, in, in uh, HA fashion, and then you can just run m as many Sensu servers as you want. And because that results queue that the clients send back their data on is a queue, servers can just pop off. You know, one ser one Sensu server will get one result and escalate it. You know, um, as it as it will, and the other will get the other result. So. So is it going to work as a master slave or is it just? Uh, it's not, it's, it's active, active. I yeah, mean, they're both, they're both okay. popping, you know, they're okay. both popping off and um, we run more kind of active passive, um, um, but you know, we'll, and we'll just fail over the other, we'll just turn on the other one looking at the, at the rabbit um, in the event that the other the, one went the down. The reason I mentioned Redis because we basically having an application where Redis is getting used. Yeah. And we always struggle to load balance Redis because there is no as such. Yeah. Uh, you know, load balancing in Redis, mm -hmm. stabilized version yeah. in there. Yeah, so I, the way you would set up HA would be, um, question was about uh, load balancing Redis, right? So the way you'd set up HA with Sensu is, yeah, just redundancy on each level. So you'd set up HA for Rabbit separately. You'd set up R H HA for the Sensu server with multiple, which is easy, and set up, uh, um, yeah, replication with, with Redis. Um, and um, I think, you know, there is an aspect of this stuff that you certainly, you need to rely on it and it needs to be very, um, you know, um, w consistent and reliable. But if, the, if Sensu goes down and, and I'm alerted to it, uh, you know, it doesn't, it's not customer facing. So although you want to be catching alerts, at that point you're already, you know, fixing, you know, it, like logging on, whatever, right? So um, at that point, if, if Sensu goes down for, um, you know, like, and I'm alerted to it, um, 
you know, I'll fix it, it'll get online, it'll be running checks, right? So that's kind of my approach to it. And you can use Pingdom to check Sensu, which is just kind of a nice sanity check that there, um, RabbitMQ is running, that there are, uh, that there are um, producers uh, connected to it, that there are consumers connected to it, that there are messages flowing through and that kind of stuff. Brilliant, thank you. Anyone else? Hopefully a very quick one. Um, you talked about scheduling and also automatically fixing problems. So could you set it up so that it automatically, say, restarted Apache at night, but not during the day? Yes. I don't know how to do that. Like, I don't have a like <laughs> pattern, like, you know, code but sample the, I can show you, but, but that's so kind of that the idea. Possible. And another um, been thing about this and kind of chatting, and th these are great kind of use cases, I think, you know, all kind of nerds when someone comes with a cool use case, you're like, ooh, how would you do that, right? So kind yeah. of people love on IRC and stuff, kind of like digging mailing lists, digging into this stuff. Um, I think the one feedback I've gotten is, you know, you want to separate monitoring from supervision in a lot, you know, uh, as much as you can. And so it's kind of tricky, and I think, you know, there's a spectrum of theories about that, but for me, um, sleeping through the night is so important that I would err on the side of like, uh, that's a safe operation, or, you know, once you, you fix something like 20 times and you're like, all I do is log in and like do this one thing, right? That's kind of when you're like, okay, I can, I can probably have this happen automatically, yeah. but you do want to log it and that's kind of what I showed. So it's not happening like, you know, Apache isn't being restarted every minute, you yeah. know, so. <laughs> but yeah, that's a cool use case and definitely kind of something that the flexibility of Sensu um, could work with restarting mm -hmm. Apache in the middle of the night, but not during the day. Cool guys, awesome. And I uh, uh, appreciate any feedback you guys have in, um, uh, on the forum and grab me later. Or excited to see what everyone else, else is up to. Oh, did anyone count the David Hasselhoffs? All right, who said three? I said three. Uh, yeah. <laughs>